Show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Why did Philip ask that? Better question is, when did this happen, right? Because today is, today is Pentecost, Pentecost, right? We got the lovely red banners up with the Holy Spirit and the the fire, right? I'm wearing my, my red shoes. A lot of people out here have bread on. It's Pentecost. It's 50 days after Easter, right? The giving of the Holy Spirit, the birthday of the church. But when did this reading happen? When did John 14 happen? Not on Pentecost. We had this just a few weeks ago. We're kind of stuck this year. The day before Jesus died. We're stuck in this you know, Monday, Thursday, time warp kind of thing going on here. This reading actually happens before Jesus washes the feet of the disciples. Jesus just said, I'm leaving you. Where I'm going, you cannot yet come. Or where I am the way, the truth, and the life is what he just said right before this, right? And then Philip says, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus goes on, as he sometimes does in the Gospel of John, with this real heady stuff of, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, and I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me, and we're all one together, and it's just going to be really nice. And that really all makes sense, right? Philip asks for some justification. Philip asks for something that's going to give him some hope and some grounding. And Jesus says, just believe. And the Spirit is coming. And what is the Spirit going to do for us? What does it do in Acts? What does it do in Romans? The Spirit in Acts comes to this rabble group of people who just recently watched their, their leader, their teacher, get killed on a cross and then watched him be taken away from them. They're probably ready to hide in fear because they just saw their leader get killed and now he's nowhere to be seen or with them. But this spirit comes to them and makes them go out into the marketplace and start to speak. Not only in their own languages, but in languages so everybody else can understand them. Speaking a message that more than likely is going to get them killed. It's moved them beyond fear to go out into the world and do what God has called them to do. And then you get the reading from Romans where it says that as we cry out to God, Abba, Father, Abba, that word Abba. Bill this morning said that the, the, the epistle to the Romans was written in Greek and he's right, but the word Abba is not Greek. It's actually Hebrew. That doesn't really have a translation in the Greek, but it's in the Greek as Abba. What is what does the word Abba mean? Daddy. Daddy. Not not father, because father is that, you know, when when it's serious, you go to your father and your dad and you go, Father. Right? When you're just messing around, it's daddy, right? Dads. You you, you know the difference when a kid comes to you and says, Father. We need to talk, right? It's probably not going to be good. But if they scream, Daddy, come here, I want to play! Right? Jesus tells, or Paul tells the, the Romans that when we cry out to God, whether it's Daddy or whether it's Father or whatever it is, that He listens to us. And that Spirit has come to us and it's the Spirit of... Read it. Read it in your lessons. It's the Spirit of... I'm going to come out and make you find it. It's the spirit of... I heard somebody over here say it. Say it louder. What? Truth Truth and... Starts with an A. It's in there, isn't it? Thank you! Who said it? Say it louder! Say it louder! (laughs) Praise Jesus! Somebody saw it. Adoption! Did you know that May is National Foster Care Month? 
And today we hear in the church that the spirit of God has come to us and given us a spirit of adoption so that we are heirs to the kingdom of God and not just heirs, but co-heirs with Christ, meaning everything that Jesus gets, you get too. everything. And there's one other word that goes through all of these lessons. Did you catch it? What a lot of us are probably filled with right now, looking at what's going to happen in November, looking at what's happening in the world all around us, wondering if we're going to have enough money to do the things that we've already set out to do, wondering what's going to happen in all of our lives. What's going to happen to these young people that we're celebrating today that are are leaving the safety of home and going out into the world to become the people that God has, has made them to be, right? As parents, you understand it and live with it daily. The fear of what's going to happen to your children, right? We all live in fear of what's going to happen. But each one of our lessons this morning tell us to not be afraid. And Paul actually says it to the Romans. We do not have a spirit of fear, but a spirit of adoption. Because we are God's children, not to live in fear, but to live through the power of the spirit that works in us to make us go out, as it talks about in Acts, into the world to to give the message regardless of what we think is going to happen to us. Right? It's not a spirit of fear. It's a spirit of hope. And a spirit of power. And a spirit of love that's going to move us out into the world to show them everything about what God is doing for us. And I have a little thing for us now. You guys can pass this out. The ushers are going to be passing out um, some devices for you. I want you to just look at it for right now. Don't do anything else with it. Just hold it in your hand and look at it. They're all going to give one to everybody. So, Except for those that can't touch them. You know you're not supposed to take them, so don't take them. (laughs) Right? It's about... Adoption. It's about what God does for us and not us living in fear out in the world. Because can any of us change a day as we worry about it? Can any of us change anything by worrying about it? And we all have some big things going on. There's, we all have something that we could worry about. We all have something that we can be anxious over. We all have something. And is it easy for us to give that up and just let it go? No, it's not always easy. But God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of hope. As the ushers are continuing to pass out your balloons today, the choir needs them too. So, Bill needs one too. As you get this, I want you to look at this balloon. I want you to look at it. It's pretty lifeless, right? It doesn't, it's not really going to do anything. You just hold it in your hand, right? It's just going to sit there. It doesn't, it, it's not going to miraculously jump up. It's not going to, to do anything special with it, right? You know, it's just kind of blah. We all feel that way when we're depressed or we're worried or we're, we're anxious about something. It's just kind of, we're just kind of here. And we don't really know what to do, right? But the balloon is something kind of like us, right? Because the Spirit comes to us, the Spirit comforts us, the Spirit gives us power. And here's something that we need to know. It says the word for Spirit in both the Greek and the Hebrew also means wind. It also means breath. So the Ruach, that's just a fun word to say, it's a Hebrew word for Spirit, Ruach, moves through us. And when God's spirit moves into us, we change, right? So what I want you to do now is I want you to to blow up your balloon. And the balloon is you. And the breath you're breathing into it is the breath of God. Don't tie it. Don't do anything else with it. Just blow it up. And then hold it in your hand. Uh Uh-oh. John just exploded. John... So hold your balloons up. 
blow them up. Careful there. Look around at them. Are they all the same? Is it the same as it was before? No, when the Spirit enters into us, the Spirit changes us, right? The Spirit brings us new life. He makes us, she makes us different than we are. It makes us not look the same, right? So now what I want you to do. Yeah, this is going to be fun, isn't it? I want you to just hold your balloon way up high. And when I count the three, I want you to let it go. Okay? Ready? One, two, three. (laughs) Ah, just leave them there for now. It'll be all right. Where did your balloon go? You found yours? Yours came back to you. But some of us don't have a clue where our balloon's at, right? I think my, mine's either one of these two down here because mine was red. But we don't know where it went, right? It's kind of the way the Spirit works in us. We don't really know where the Spirit's going to take us. But I guarantee you, if you follow the Spirit and let the Spirit guide you where it will, that your life is going to be fun and exciting. And God is always going to be with you. And what else happened as you let Him go? What did you hear? Who did that? Thank you. Do it louder. The spirit makes funny noises sometimes when it works. But what else did you hear? Laughter. There was joy, right? Because following the spirit or knowing that God is with us, even in those moments where we're anxious, even in those moments when we're afraid, the spirit still is there and allows us to have joy and laughter And understanding that God is always with us. And that, my friends, is the most important message you could hear on Pentecost or any day of the church. Is that God is always with you. Regardless of what happens. Regardless of the fears or the anxieties or anything that you're going through. God is always with you. And if you can listen and hear that spirit moving in you. God is going to take you on a fantastic journey. That's going to be filled with ups and downs. But you'll always have joy knowing that the presence of God is always with you.